Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sorry for this delay. Um, now we are going to try to, to, to speed up. Um, basically, I would like to basically to welcome to welcome you, Mediterraneans. Welcome again to Barcelona to this second edition of the Switch Met Connect uh, event. I'm Enrique, and I belong to uh, a team of 60 people making making up uh, the SCP RAC, the Center for Eco Innovation in the Mediterranean. As you know, this is the annual forum of SwitchMet, the space for Mediterraneans to exchange knowledge, build synergies, and partnerships for solutions for eco and social innovation. If you are connected to SwitchMet, you belong to the greatest community of entrepreneurs, businesses, members from governments, financial agents, civil society, and international organizations from all over the Mediterranean countries, leading the process for a transition to a green, circular and social inclusive Mediterranean economy. Our network currently brings together more than 1,000 partners and it continues growing. I would like to briefly inform you on some few good news that have happened since the SwitchMed community started to move forward. More than 300 industry professionals have been trained on resource and energy efficiency. Also, almost 1,400 industries have been contacted join, to join our network. Out of, of almost 4,000 applications, more than 1,400 green entrepreneurs have been trained with a unique training methodology. A Mediterranean action plan for sustainable consumption and production has been approved by 21 Mediterranean countries. Eight Mediterranean countries have prepared, have developed a specific SCP action plan to mainstream sustainable consumption and production. Sorry, because SCP stands for sustainable consumption and production, and the people that normally are used to, to work with these words forget that maybe others, of course, don't know it. So, as I was mentioned, these eight countries are increasing their efforts in order to mainstream the ways in which uh, we consume and produce in a, in, a, in a manner that is more sustainable and it's, in that sense, contributing to a green economy. It was just one year ago that our network launched the Twitchers. I think that many of you already know this platform. This platform showcases the stories of Mediterranean startups, companies, and grassroots initiatives offering eco and social innovative services and products. The platform already collects 100 case studies, and it will reach 400 in the next two years. Uh, right, Daniel? We will, we will make it. Huh? I don't know where is Daniel, but basically it's your colleague uh, managing the, the platform. Uh, last but not least, uh, also we have something to celebrate uh, this year, which is the fourth, fourth year anniversary of the Barcelona Convention, an international treaty bringing together Mediterranean countries to work for a sustainable future in a region and identify sustainable consumption and production as priority to achieve that aim. You will be able uh, to find more information on the main impacts that we have uh, reached so far through SwitchMed in the newspaper that you have been given and that also contains the program of uh, this, uh, this uh, forum that will be uh, bringing us together during these uh, two days. In this opening session, we count on the, on the pleasure to have with us the following representatives of the international organizations supporting our community and also from the Catalan and Spanish government. Miguel Garcia Raiz, Deputy Secretary General of the Union for the Mediterranean, Secretariat, Mr. Stefan Seekers, Director of the Environmental Branch from the Organization of the United Nations for Industrial Development. Gaetano Leone, Coordinator of the Mediterranean Action Plan of the United Nations Environment. Mr. Matthew Popowski, Deputy Director General in the Director General for Neighborhood and Enlargement Negotiations of the European Commission. Marta Subira, Secretary for the Environment and Sustainability of the Government of Catalonia and Mario Jose Delgado Alfaro, Deputy Director of Waste in the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Environment of Spain. So please now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Miguel Garcia from the UFM. Please, Miguel, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, we were noticing a few of us uh, who joined this forum that this is not the ordinary forum that we are used to. Uh, it is more of a happening type of event, and I say it in a very positive manner, 
because uh, uh, I think what we are here to do today uh, is to share ideas, to share the creativity which is represented by those who are striving for a, for a better world, and to do it through these uh, innovations in the area of, of sustainable consumption and production, SCP. I must say I was one of those who until recently would not have known what SCP was, but I'm happy uh, now that I'm involved uh, to be able to con contribute to making this uh, uh, a reality more and more day by day. When I say that this is a, a sort of happening, um, I think it's, it's, it's important to, to see how we are structuring the work to attain these, these goals. And I will start maybe from bottom up as, as, as we see it here today. Uh, the fact is that, that we have here a, a very large gathering of representatives of many different institutional levels. I represent the Union for Mediterranean, Secretariat of the Union for Mediterranean, we are a multilateral org organization focused on policies, on politics. We unite 43 member states in common efforts to reach uh, uh, policies which we've agreed at a ministerial level. That is to say, this is the work, joint work of the European Union member states and of all the countries uh, on the Mediterranean, on the southern Mediterranean coastline, but also eastern Mediterranean, and, and some countries which are not properly Mediterranean uh, uh, as well, but who are, who are close partners of us. This is a, a political endeavor, and I think that is, that is important for everybody to retain, in the sense that, that the work here goes from, from the bottom, and, and, and this is not a, 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 to, to, to say that there's more important, less important, but it goes from the ground, those people who are, who are creating different solutions, but it goes up to the top where there are political obligations which are taken up by member states, member states of our organizations and of other organizations through other different uh, policy, policy forums, and, but have to combine in a way. And, and, and I think for us, uh, as a Union for Mediterranean, it is particularly valuable to be in contact with, with, with you and with the people we will be seeing in the next, in the next two days, because it, it, it shows the type of work that we are promoting politically. Um, and for me personally, this is, this, is, this is very valuable. The Union for Mediterranean has a, a specific mandate in the area of sustainable consumption and, and production. Uh, from, uh, in, in 2014, the ministers of environment, also dealing with, with climate change, adopted a common uh, ministerial declaration. And it focused on, on different areas, which at the time, uh, very recently, but already there has been evolution since then, at the time were, were seen to be the most, uh, the most pressing in the, in the environmental area. And, and these were, in particular, the decontamination of the Mediterranean Sea, where there are huge collaborative efforts from many different organizations. Some of them are, are present here today. But one of the parts which was also identified as a political priority at the level of 43 uh, uh, states was to promote a green economy, circular economy, and sustainable patterns of consumption and production. This is why uh, we, we are involved in this, and we have a mandate, actually a mandate which is coming up very recently in, in, in January 2016, to report on what has been done in the, these past two years in these different areas, including, of course, SCP, as, as we are saying. In that sense, the work that is being going to be done these two days is, is, is very valuable in providing us the elements to define what will be not the balance, the, the, the looking back of what has been done, but rather those things which will be part of our work in the future. Because once we look back on what has been done, we need to look towards the future to see the gaps of what has not been done, the new ideas, the new stimulus of, of things that must be done. I will give the example of, of marine litter, which is something which is, uh, in 2014 was only highlighted actually as an emerging t topic, at least at political level. I'm sure it was there already much stronger before, but which is now very much at the core of uh, issues which are no longer emerging, but they're already there, and they're different, they're different areas. And, and I will highlight one of the projects that has been labeled by the 43 member states. This is the Plastic Busters Project by the University of Siena, and their representatives are, are here, and happy to meet them, which, which shows that, that at the political level, we evolve with the thinking behind uh, at the more technical level, at the more gr grassroots uh, organizations. As, a, as, a, um, as an organization, we are also happy to cooperate with the organization of, uh, of SwitchMed, with SCP RAC, uh, and with the different institutions who are involved. We also work with different institutions. We work with financial institutions. Uh, 
which provide funding, uh, and, and, and that is always a challenge because in, in many of these areas we know the difficulty lies in, in interesting uh, a financier to fund projects which the financial return is not so clear at an early stage. So we are happy to be able to count with the, with the cooperation of the EIB and in a particular project in this area with the EBRD, joined by uh, uh, a part of the donor community. The Austrian, Austrian government has funded with 5 million uh, euros a project called DRIVE, which is to kick off uh, an open access to financing through the banking sector for innovative uh, um, solutions, commercial solutions in the end, uh, for businessmen and, and entrepreneurs. Um, very soon, Union for Mediterranean and, and, and many of the people involved here, we will be uh, heading to, to Marrakesh for the COP22. Uh, what the work that we are doing on, on, on sustainable consumption and production also is part of that broader picture of our response to, to, to climate change. And, and, and I, I insist, the, the work on sustainable development, the work on circular economy, uh, the political impetus that we gather when we meet at these gatherings at this level, but also certainly in, in, in Marrakesh, are very important um, steps in, 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 in creating the political environment which is necessary for all these ideas to, uh, to disseminate and to germinate uh, more broadly. Um, finally, there are two areas where we work and which I, I, I insist is very important. We are, uh, uh, I said, a political organization, uh, and, and what we can do, and, and, and I address some of my colleagues, is, is what we are do is act as a platform of platforms. Uh, we do not substitute ourselves to the work of others, but rather we provide uh, sometimes a neutral venue, sometimes a technical expertise which can add to that, to that political uh, impetus to provide people with a chance of bringing different networks which often do not actually meet when they don't have this political chapeau. We do that as well through our, our, our contact with civil society. The networking we can do with regional organizations, regional governments, local governments, civil society allows us to act as this, I insist, platform of platforms. And um, that is why I go back to the happening of today, this switch met happening in, in, in the most positive and maybe less artistic sense, but as a gathering of, 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 of innovative minds, is very useful because it al allows us to to introduce ourselves, like I'm doing now, but it allows us especially to connect with you uh, who are at, at, at the heart of, of the new ideas which are, which are coming out. Um, I think also Barcelona is, is, a, is a unique venue for, for this, not only because of, of, of uh, the old hospital which is hosting uh, our conference, but because uh, it, it is very much involved in, in, in many activities linked to, to these ideas. It is part of the philosophy of the city to uh, work on these areas, and it, for me, who I am a recent arrival in Barcelona, it is, it is most uh, admirable, thinking of the recent event like uh, the Coast Day and, and the involvement of the, of the town hall in issues of blue economy. So, so I think we, are, we have all the elements today, uh, counting with the support of also as well the European Commission uh, and, and, and the government of Spain to, to have a successful meeting and, and to really uh, provide us with, with the right, insist, political stimulus and ideas to, to make it a very success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Enrique. Good morning. Um, I would like to just introduce a little bit closer the, uh, the topic of the, of the meeting that we have here in these days and, and to try to, to span a little bit the framework under which all of us are operating. Um, first, I would like to welcome, of course, all of you as participants here with the various roles that you're playing in the SwitchMed program. I would also like to uh, welcome uh, uh, from uh, DG Nier of the European Commission, Mr. Popovsky, um, as well as my colleagues from UNEP, uh, UFM, SAP, RAC, and uh, at this point in time, a heartfelt thanks to the governments of Spain and of Catalonia for their hospitality and of UFM, 
with, uh, for UFM for all the arrangements that they are undertaking to make this conference happen here in this beautiful city of Barcelona. I hope all of you will also have some opportunity to enjoy it. Now, why are we here? <clears throat> in principle, SwitchMed belongs to a larger um, amount of events happening around two topics. Um, in your region, the world is shifting. Many things are in motion. Times are difficult for you. That relates, that brings also economic challenges for, for all of you, for your countries, for the whole region. At the same time, the environment, the global environment, is undergoing more and more challenges. Um, these challenges of the global environment lead to essentially two different things. One is every country needs to move and try to improve their environmental footprint. The other one is that you being in a region where you have other actors and actually having the European Union nearby, you also have to have an eye on what is happening there and you have to somehow accommodate uh, within your action of what the European Union is doing. Now, SwitchMed is trying to connect all of these points. SwitchMed is trying to connect the, the uh, improvement on an economic scale, the improvement of companies, the abilities of companies to actually generate better income, more sustainable income, more efficiently earned income for their owners, for their, uh, for their people, to try at the same time to find job opportunities and at the same time to improve the environment. Now this is, uh, for me, as um, the Director of Environment in UNIDO, this is the most interesting part of my job, which is to combine um, economic growth and, and creating jobs with improving the environment. And I think it's in your hands to make that happen. And I believe SwitchMed is an amazing opportunity for you to get the tools in your hand and to get the education and the networking, which will enable you to facilitate industries in your countries to get there, no matter whether your role is uh, as an entrepreneur, as someone who is actually driving change to, through the exchange of knowledge and uh, providing um, insights into how to produce more resource efficient and clean, or whether your role is that of a, of a policymaker, helping those rules along, or finally, as someone who helps finding finance for these opportunities. My colleagues and us in UNIDO, we are jointly trying to work on very different angles of the, of the problem that all of you are facing, all of us are facing, and, and we try to provide you with know-how, with platforms, with access to finance, with actually very practical work. For example, we in UNIDO have, uh, through the work of you, with our support, I should say, uh, we have already addressed around 120 different companies as pilot cases, and we hope to address more, and through action on the ground, the networking, the policy support. We believe that you have a unique opportunity to make the first steps forward to combine economic, more economic health and better economic opportunities with a better environment and more sustainable companies. Now, <clears throat> in saying that, uh, there is of course, uh, this program has of course certain limits, uh, we cannot actually, and it's actually not the sense of it, to do your work. It's the sense of helping you to do your work and to do it best. And I know all of you are more than capable of actually um, going that way. And wh what has already impressed me last year and impresses me this year to the degree I saw it already even more is the, the willingness and the interest and the enthusiasm of all of you to participate, to learn, to interact, and to look for new business opportunities and new opportunities to actually improve the environment. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to the Commission for being our donor. Thank you to our host and my colleagues. And um, I wish all of you a good conference and a few very interesting days. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephen. Now, please, get on. Jordan. Good morning, um, dear colleagues and participants. A warm welcome also from me. I, I'm here representing the uh, United Nations Environment, the Mediterranean Action Plan. 
And I'm particularly grateful for being in Barcelona. Barcelona is the, the city that gives the name to the convention uh, that I coordinate for the protection of the environment, of the marine environment and coastal region of the, uh, of the Mediterranean. And it's also a city whose defining traits, one would say, are certainly innovation and inspiration. And I'm grateful for the hospitality um, of the authorities here in this beautiful, in this beautiful place. Um, I, I know I'm preaching to the converted. Certainly, uh, the, the, um, uh, our way of doing things, our fundamental uh, style of life needs a paradigm shift. And this is something that is supported by enough evidence now. It requires um, urgent and concerted and integrated action. Um, the, the way we, in which goods and services um, we consume and we produce must be decoupled um, from, uh, as, as, from the development of our, our civilization from the environmental degradation and the depletion of, uh, um, of resources. And I hate uh, you know, giving uh, pictures that are a little bit gloomy, but I think it's important to recall that our region, the Mediterranean Sea, is uh, a region where pressures are, are huge and pressures are increasing. Um, we are now, just to mention a few, uh, the, the, uh, one of the most affected regions by uh, the challenge of, uh, of climate change. Um, it is expected that this region will suffer uh, multiple stresses, systemic failures. Um, the, the Mediterranean countries do generate 20 million of tons of hazardous waste, and the region, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the coastal regions generate additional 20 million of tons of municipal um, solid waste. We have, uh, in some areas of the Mediterranean, the highest presence of plastic debris in the world. And I could continue, uh, but I will stop here, um, because just as we talk about challenges, we need to look also at what is going on, at the uh, very strongly renewed interest that exists in the international community in, in terms of uh, uh, protection of the marine environment, in terms of, of uh, ocean governance. There are debates uh, that are going on. There is a dialogue that, I, that is going on in the international community now um, on, on uh, uh, biodiversity, on uh, uh, marine litter, as it has been mentioned, on many other issues, which, however, lead us to, to, to one place. Uh, we must act. It is time now to concerted, integrated action by all the partners. And in that sense, the, the, I believe that MedSwitch and the specific um, initiative of MedSwitch Connect have a great relevance and have a great significance and are the way in which we need to move, to move forward. Um, this year we have celebrated, as Enrique said, the 40th anniversary of the Barcelona Convention. Um, this is a convention which is mm, the mandate uh, us with the protection of the marine environment, as I said, and the sustainable development um, of the region. And I know it sounds bureaucratic, uh, another of those old UN initiatives, but in fact, um, I want to tell you that when the ministers of all the 21 countries um, that are on the, on the Mediterranean and the European Union, which are the contracting parties, of the Barcelona Convention. When they met uh, this February, they took a number of important strategic decisions which are very relevant to the work of all of us here. Uh, one is the definition of a strategy for sustainable development for the Mediterranean for the next 20 years. The other one is the agreement on a specific action plan for sustainable consumption and production in the Mediterranean. And to me, these are two milestones that we have achieved two important uh, guidelines for our action um, in, a, in, in, in the immediate, but also in the medium term. Um, this, these are, are frameworks in which we can, um, we can build and we can strengthen as, uh, as, uh, our action in, uh, in fighting against pollution, in protecting biodiversity, in promoting a sustainable management of the coastal area, adapting to climate change, and shifting to sustainable consumption and production. 
action. And I think we too often lose sight of the uh, systemic uh, dangers that we are, we are facing nowadays. We look too much at the sectors, much more than we should, and we lose sight of what, in fact, needs to be done um, in an integrated way. And again, I believe that the, 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 the Med Switch, and, sorry, Switch Med and the Switch Med Connect um, are fantastic example um, in that direction. So um, we are very grateful to the, to the uh, support that we've received uh, from the European Commission. Um, we are certainly very grateful to all our partners, many are represented in this room. I just mentioned uh, the Union for the Mediterranean, you just heard, the UNIDO, um, our own regional activity centers, uh, such as the SCP RAC here in, uh, in Barcelona that uh, Enrique leads, uh, the many initiatives that are going on around our um, legally binding uh, instrument of the Barcelona Convention. I, I always think, maybe in a simplistic way, our, our budget for two years for a mandate of protecting the environment of the Mediterranean Sea is 11 million euros, which is the cost, probably the price of one of the smallest uh, uh, yachts that you see in our marina solely around. Um, and yet, uh, we managed to, 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 to really uh, define policies um, with governments that are seriously committed to making a change, um, with governments that, uh, by, by taking those decisions, in fact, uh, they commit to translate them into uh, national binding um, legislation. Um, let me give you uh, just very quickly um, a, a picture of this, uh, of the Sustainable Consumption and Production Action Plan that the governments of the Mediterranean have agreed on uh, in February. Um, the, it's structured around four economic sectors, food sector, fisheries and agriculture sector, the tourism sector, good manufacturing and housing and construction. And uh, these sectors are all essential, of course, for socioeconomic development, for the, um, for the job market, but they are also, and that's the price that we pay, um, main contributors to the pollution and to the environmental degradation uh, of the region. Let's take tourism, uh, for example. Tourism, which is very central to the international debate this year, at, uh, the General Assembly of the UN has announced that 2017 will be the year of sustainable tourism for, um, for development. Uh, tourism, I don't need to say how important it is for livelihoods, for uh, the identity itself um, of the Mediterranean region. We received 300 million uh, visitors. This city is one of the uh, magnets of, of, of tourism in the Mediterranean. And it, it, has, it is therefore a crucial engine for growth and for, as I said, for livelihood of many communities. But it is, as, as I said, also a main cause of environmental degradation, especially in, uh, uh, in coastal areas. So sustainable consumption and production needs to be um, mainstreamed in the tourism sector, and we are ready to follow this, this, uh, this, this path. Uh, we are thinking of uh, uh, using our next meeting of the government um, in 2017 to focus on uh, sustainable Mediterranean, um, Mediterranean uh, tourism in a way that not only we protect the environment but also benefit the communities that live um, on, these, on the economic activities linked to, uh, to tourism. As I said, this is just, um, this is just a, a, an example, um, but it, it is one that that applies to all the sectors towards that drive uh, to reach a systemic uh, shift um, of the way we, we, we grow and the way we uh, produce and uh, and consuming, but um, uh, you know, with our 11 millions and our our decisions, that's only the first step. The real work starts here. Um, it, the real work is what is done together with uh, with all the actors, with business, with uh, um, with civil society, with research, with uh, local authorities. And in that sense, I want to congratulate again the organizers of Switch Med Connect, a great space where I hope we will all enjoy um, not only the beauty and the hospitality of uh, Barcelona and of the authorities here, but most importantly, a moment of reflection and of learning uh, for all of us towards what really, we really care about, which is sustainable development at the end. Thank you very much, and thanks, Enrique, for organizing this. Thank you very much, Gaetano. Now, please, uh, Mr. Pogoski, if you are so kind. Thank you.
thank you very much. It's a great place, a great event to be. I'm a bit ashamed uh, because of the, uh, the light motive of the meeting because I'm still using paper for my intervention, which is not very sustainable. I'm very sorry for that. Next time I'll do better. Um, and I just discovered that uh, uh, that event, I think uh, the name is very snappy. I like it a lot. And I'm, uh, I'm very glad that I can uh, represent the commission, in particular Commissioner Hahn, um, at, 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 uh, at the opening of the event uh, uh, today. Um, we at the DG Near, you know, we use acronyms so that nobody can understand what we do, but I, I will explain. Uh, we are dealing with the, um, uh, with the neighborhood and, and enlargement. Um, and of course, neighborhood also includes the Mediterranean uh, uh, countries. And I would like to uh, underline the importance of programs like SwitchMed um, uh, as a tool to strengthen regional cooperation, in, in particular in sectors like <clears throat> where economy and environmental governance meet. Uh, the funds allocated to the environmental sector represent the largest share of our regional cooperation portfolio, and SwitchMed is, is the biggest project within that portfolio, with a total contribution from the EU budget of 22 million euros. This is a, a clear sign that uh, cooperation in this sector remains a priority for the EU, and that considerable resources are allocated for the achievement of, the, of, of its objectives. So today's event is the second regional gathering of the stakeholders committed to change the current uh, production and consumption models in the Mediterranean. Uh, we are dedicated to uh, promote such change, and we've teamed up with a number of, of partners. Uh, most of them are present here today, in particular UNIDO and, and UNEP. Uh, the objective of SwitchMed is to facilitate the shift towards sustainable consumption production, as it was already underlined, so I don't need to, to uh, repeat that. Um, it will do so by supporting uh, industry, emerging green entrepreneurs, civil society, policy makers through policy development, demonstration activities, and, and networking. Overall, um, this initiative is about changing the way goods and services are produced and consumed so that economic uh, development is decoupled from a systemic environmental uh, degradation. And more than that, SwitchMed is a way to make the economy more dynamic while creating jobs and building professional capacity. And this is fully in line with the European neighbor neighborhood policy. This is our policy framework for the neighborhood that was uh, revised a year ago in November 2015. Strengthening cooperation in the area of economic development is one of our key priorities. Um, uh, and the aim is to offer more opportunities to the youth in our Mediterranean partners. Needless to say, linking economic development with activities promoting sustainable development and resource efficiency is also a, a priority of EU's cooperation with um, our partner countries. A switch met is part of a, a, um, a bigger network, uh, part of a larger number of interventions promoted and financed by the EU in the field of sustainable um, cooperation and, and development. Such interventions target several regions uh, in, in the world where cooperation arrangements have been put in place uh, with institutional and economic actors across a large number of, uh, of countries. So we have Switch Asia, uh, we have uh, a network in Eastern Europe and the Caucasus called EAP Green, and, and there is a network in Africa, Switch Africa Green, um, so, um, um, globally, through the Switch to Green program, uh, we wanted to create an umbrella initiative serving all EU-funded projects on SCP and, and, and green economy. So, in this global context, SwitchMed uh, uh, Connect provides a unique opportunity to set up a community of practice in the Mediterranean that uh, would work together to exchange ideas and, and best practices and, and could help attain the, uh, the goal of sustainable um, development. By allowing uh, entrepreneurs from the Mediterranean countries to collaborate with green and innovative European entrepreneurs, SwitchMed Connect can be seen as an important tool to strengthen north-south and south-south cooperation um, across the, uh, the Mediterranean uh, Sea. So I would like to encourage you to use those two days to build ties, to network, to exchange knowledge, best practices, share ideas. Um, I think we all uh, united around one goal, but uh, it's always good to learn from, uh, from each other. The 
the key challenge is to make sustainable consumption production walk on its own feet uh, without uh, uh, the need of continued financial assistance. Uh, therefore, it's important to turn the perception on the environmental aspects of, of business from a constraint to a booster uh, of economic uh, development. The commitment of public institutions, private sector, and civil society is essential for this message to be part of a, a new model of production and, and, and consumption. So in closing, I would like to wish to all the switchers a uh, very successful uh, uh, two days and uh, once again grateful for the invitation and uh, um, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Poposki. Now will be the turn of Maria Jose. So please, Maria Jose, if you want to take the floor. I would like just to tell you that Maria Jose will be speaking in French. So those of you that uh, didn't take the earphones, please, now it's the moment. Thank you. Merci, Enrique. Bonjour à tous. Comme, Enrique, comme Enrique vous l'a <coughs> souligné, si vous me permettez, je m'adresse à vous en français. Je remercie très sincèrement à SwitchMed pour l'invitation au ministère de l'Environnement, en fait de l'agriculture, de l'alimentation et de l'environnement, à participer dans cette journée. Le plus grand défi de notre génération est justement celui qui nous a réunis à tous nous ici, parvenir à un développement durable, un modèle économique qui permet la croissance sans compromettre la croissance de l'avenir pour les futures générations. Redresser et corriger les risques environnementaux du modèle actuel est la clé d'un avenir sûr et prospère pour les générations futures. Et cela exige de prendre une série de décisions. Tout d'abord, nous devons réaliser que nous devons choisir. Le modèle économique linéaire, fabriqué, consommé, éliminé, est agressif avec l'environnement et épuise nos sources d'approvisionnement. Il nous faut donc choisir de changer si nous voulons aller vers un avenir meilleur. Nous devons utiliser les nouveaux outils et technologies à notre disposition. Nous devons tirer parti des nouvelles connaissances qui nous permettent de produire plus avec moins, tout en respectant notre environnement naturel. Enfin, nous devons prendre conscience que dans ces grands défis, nous sommes tous nécessaires. Et comme vous savez, notre génération sera confrontée à un enjeu plus exigeant encore selon les nouvelles approximations de l'Union européenne au principe de l'économie circulaire. Économie circulaire qui, dans un contexte de matières, précières, de matières premières de plus en plus rares et coûteuses, prend un rôle très important. Il est l'un de ces initiatives phares dans le cadre de l'Europe 2020 qui développe les stratégies européennes pour créer une croissance intelligente, durable et inclusive. À cet égard, le nouveau paquet de mesures sur l'économie circulaire de la Commission européenne, approuvé le mois de décembre dernier, vise à stimuler la compétitivité ainsi que la création d'emplois et la croissance durable. À cet égard, le nouveau paquet de mesures est donc comme comme finalité la réduction des dépositions de déchets en vertébéro et aussi la, la croissance des pourcentages de recyclage des déchets. Et pour ces mesures, il y a des fonds européens qui ont été habilités. 650 millions d'euros de l'horizon 2020, les programmes de financement et de la recherche et d'innovation dans l'Union européenne et 5 500 millions provenant de fonds structurels pour la gestion des déchets et de l'investissement dans l'économie circulaire au niveau national. La transition vers une économie circulaire est déjà commencée. Dans le cadre du paquet d'économie de la Commission européenne, le plan d'action proposé développe un total de 104 étapes vers une économie circulaire. À cet égard, nous considérons très importante, dans la position de l'Espagne, d'avancer au niveau des mesures de la communauté concernant l'éco-conception des produits, l'étiquetage ou marquage de ces produits et finalement la réintroduction en toute sécurité pour la santé humaine et l'environnement des déchets. 
Si la Commission européenne qui avance sur ces lignes, si c'est elle qui avance sur ces lignes, on réussit à garantir que tous les États membres et tous les États, et tous les États qui sont à l'entourage de la Commission de l'Union européenne ont les mêmes règles, ce qui suppose une unité, une unité des marchés et une libre circulation des marchandises. À l'échelle nationale en Espagne, dans le domaine de l'économie circulaire et de l'efficacité dans l'usage des ressources, des instruments clés ont été approuvés pour le gouvernement. Dans l'année 2013, le programme national pour la prévention des déchets 2014-2020 et dans l'année 2015, le plan national sur la gestion des déchets 2016-2020. Sur ces plans sont marquées les lignes directrices pour la politique de prévention et de gestion des déchets pour les années à venir suivant les principes de l'économie circulaire et de la hiérarchie des déchets. Nous espérons que ces deux instruments permettront que l'Espagne avance pour une meilleure utilisation des ressources à notre disposition. Mais nous ne réussirons pas cet objectif qu'avec la participation active de tous, parce que la succession de petites décisions a un grand impact sur notre environnement. Toutes les décisions comptent si nous voulons être efficaces dans l'utilisation des ressources, en générant moins de déchets et en favorisant la réutilisation ainsi que la valorisation des matières contenues aux déchets. Il s'agit d'une tâche avec un grand travail de fond. Ce travail peut et doit être entrepris par des secteurs, par des secteurs et en des domaines très différents, pressant tous ceux lors des sessions de cette journée. L'innovation, les nouvelles technologies de la recherche sont appelées à jouer un rôle très important parce qu'ils sont l'instrument qui nous permet d'aller vers une plus grande durabilité des produits dans la fabrication de ces produits et aussi dans la gestion des déchets générés par ces produits. L'entreprise peut être capable d'assumer cette innovation pour développer des initiatives qui utilisent moins de ressources dans la production sans réduire la qualité des produits. Désormais, la production doit être conçue pour qu'il puisse être réparé. Au paradigme, au paradigme d'un futur système où les déchets doivent être transformés en matières premières, l'implication des entreprises est indispensable. La société en général et les associations, il y a beaucoup d'organisations qui travaillent pour améliorer l'environnement, développant des activités génératrices d'emplois durables et dans de nombreux cas facilitant l'insertion dans le marché du travail des groupes à un risque d'exclusion sociale. Le gouvernement et les administrations publiques sont essentiels pour mettre en œuvre des, pub des politiques publiques qui favorisent l'activité des, des acteurs de l'économie circulaire. D'une part, à travers de l'établissement d'un cadre juridique qui rend possible ces approches, et d'autre côté, à travers du contrôle de ces cadres réglementaires pour veiller pour l'application des mêmes règles à tous les opérateurs. Enfin, je voudrais souligner l'importance de l'information et de la sensibilisation, car une société bien informée prend ses décisions avec plus de connaissances et critères et est prête à relever tous les défis. Chacun dans son domaine, dans sa position et sa responsabilité, aussi comme citoyen qu'en tant que professionnel, peut apporter une contribution précieuse qui fera avancer les défis auxquels nous sommes confrontés, non seulement pour améliorer notre environnement, mais aussi l'économie et l'emploi. J'ai fini mon intervention en soulignant que nous sommes dans une période de transition vers une économie circulaire et vers une économie faible en émissions de carbone. Les transitions sont les opportunités que l'histoire accorde aux sociétés afin qu'ils puissent discuter et bâtir un avenir, un avenir meilleur. Ensemble, nous développerons une société plus prospère et durable. Je suis convaincue que dans cette journée, on aura l'opportunité d'échanger points de vue et expériences qui nous rapprocheront à cette société. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Maria José. Now I would like to ask uh, Marta to to uh, make the closing of this uh, of this opening. Thank you, Marta. Thank you very much, Enrique. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to wish you all a very good morning. It gives me great pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to you all on behalf of Mr. Josep Rull, the Minister for Territory and Sustainability of the Government of Catalonia. First of all, I would like to thank the European Commission and all the organizers for once again choosing Barcelona to hold this second edition of SwitchMed Connect. As it has been said, the government of Catalonia is very much committed to all matters related to the protection of environment, both in Catalonia and also in all the Mediterranean area. 
Just a few weeks ago, we had the opportunity to explain personally to Mr. Popovsky's colleague, uh, the Director General, uh, the Deputy Director General in Charge of Coordination of Resource Efficiency Policies and Instruments, Mrs. Joanna Drake, in the G environment, that last year the Government of Catalonia approved the strategy towards a green circular economy, which frames the concept of a sustainable economy in Catalonia and draws together our efforts in pursuing this in one strategic document. Uh, this is a strategic document also that it's been uh, uh, prepared for all the departments of the government, not only from the Department of Environment, which we think it's something also very important to point out. This strategy includes a wide array of initiatives, like the launching of Eco Innovation Coupons, a financial aid for Catalan SMEs to improve their competitiveness and to foster their transition towards a green and circular economy. Uh, also offer grants to waste prevention and circular economy projects. We are also implementing the toolkit delivering the circular economy developed by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, of which we have in fact been members since May 2015, and which allows us to evaluate the benefits of deploying a circular economy perspective within leading economic sectors in Catalonia. Also, we are working in the Catalan strategy for eco-design. This includes the Catalan Eco-Design Prize, which offers recognition to businesses, designers, and products that have incorporated eco-design strategies into their processes. We are also developing the general framework program for the prevention and management of waste and resources in Catalonia. This has been drafted by the Catalan Waste Agency and reflects the priority that it's been given to the circular approach to waste management in Catalonia. And together with seven other partners, we are working on the CIRC-E project, European Regions Toward a Circular Economy, in response to the second call for proposals of the Interreg program that aims at helping partners to increase their capacities to steer their economy towards a circular model. Our partners in this proposal represent both the regional and local scale, including Lombardy and Lower Silesia um, a region in Poland, the province of Gelderland in the Netherlands, or the London Waste and Recycling Board, among others. It goes without saying that all these initiatives and tools also act as a comprehensive uh, framework for complying with the European Union Circular Economy Package, an initiative to which the government of Catalonia is strongly committed. Furthermore, uh, I would like to encourage you to consider ways of addressing the increasing problem of marine litter in, our, in, or in your discussions over the next few days. In this respect, the government of Catalonia has put forward Mar Viva, a project promoted by the Waste Agency of Catalonia the fishermen of Barcelona and the Barcelona Port Authority, aimed at identifying the origin and characteristics of marine litter and at building awareness among both citizens and fishermen. On a more global level, Catalonia, as a member of Energy for SD, the network of regional governments for sustainable development, played an active part at the UN Summit for Sustainable Le Development last year in which the 17 SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, were approved. In this regard, Catalonia is currently developing an Agenda 2030, which will become a strategic and transformative tool for guaranteeing sustainable development in our country, as well as for facilitating decision and policy making. We hope that this agenda will as well be a reference for all regions on the Mediterranean area. And the cause of celebration this year, on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the Barcelona Convention, I would like to congratulate both the Barcelona Convention and the Mediterranean Action Plan for successfully updating the Mediterranean Strategy for Sustainable Development and adopting a Mediterranean Action Plan on Sustainable Consumption and Production, representing two milestones in identifying common actions and objectives in the areas of food, tourism, housing, and goods manufacturing. Taking into account 
uh, the relevance of tourism for Catalonia and the Mediterranean region, and Mr., as Mr. Leone highlighted just a few mi minutes ago. And that next year, 2017, is the UN year for sustainable tourism. It is worth pointing out that last year, Catalonia received the UNESCO Biosphere Responsible Tourism Certification, which acknowledges the equality, the environmental sustainability, and social responsibility of our tourist destinations. Although we are also aware that we have a lot of work to do still. And last but not least, I would like to extend our congratulations to all stakeholders involved in the SwitchMed uh, program for the hard work you are carrying out, and also to UNIDO, UNEP, and the UPM for their involvement. Thank you very much for all your contributions. On behalf of the Government of Catalonia, I encourage you to continue with your tireless work in this endeavor, because the transition towards a circular economy is vital to the coupling our social economic future from the degradation of our planet. I would also encourage you to come back to Barcelona and to Catalonia, where you can be sure that we will welcome you with open arms. Thank you very much, and I wish you all a very successful meeting. Thank you.